milk come from? Almond Bree starts here with our almond trees in our Blue Diamond Orchard in California. My parents' job is to look after them. And it's my job to test the product. The best almonds make the best almond milk. Blue Diamond Almond Breeze. In tonight's E.T. Birthdays, which NBA MVP was the first African-American male to be on the cover of Vogue magazine? Mm -hmm. That is LeBron James, who turns 35 today. Happy birthday, LeBron. And also, let's talk about tomorrow because millions will be tuning in to Dick Clark's New Year's Rocket Eve on ABC. It's a tradition, and yeah. Sierra is hosting here. Happening now. A Purple Heart medal from the 1940s found nearly a decade ago has finally been returned. Who helped return the medal to its rightful owners? We're nearing the end of the year, and that means the final push for 2020 candidates to get dollars and endorsements. I'm Nadia Romero in Washington with the latest. A lot of us are making plans for New Year's Eve. We do have a bit of a weather pattern shift in play. We could see rain for the start of the year. I'll have your forecast, including what you can expect at midnight, coming up. And there's good news for Hispanic entrepreneurs. Lift Fund is launching the San Antonio Latino Dream Makers Fund, and Bank of America is putting $100,000 into that fund. A flu death reported in Kerr County. A look at the latest numbers in Texas and here in San Antonio. The news at 5 starts right now. First at 5, the Bear County Medical Examiner has identified a 19-year-old man killed in an early morning shooting as Aiden Hoffman. He was a former football player at Madison High School and was signed to play at West Texas A&M University. Police say he was shot while pulling into a parking lot on O'Connor Road around 1230 this morning. They say after he was hit, he crashed into a curb and barrier. He died at the hospital. At last check, no arrests have been made. Well, do you recognize these two men? San Antonio police say they robbed a man outside a Home Depot on Fair Avenue earlier this month. It happened back on December 5th. Police say a man was walking to his car when the suspects pulled up in a white Chevy Suburban. One of them got out and then pointed a gun at the victim. They got away with some of his property. If you recognize them or have any information on their whereabouts, call Crime Stoppers at 210-224-STOP. There's up to a $5,000 reward for information leading to an arrest. A 43-year-old corrections officer with the Kerr County Sheriff's Office has died following complications from the flu. Sheriff Rusty Hairholzer announced that death of Stephen Walters on Sunday. The sheriff writing on Facebook that Walters had come down with the flu a little over two weeks ago, but then complications set in and he was hospitalized. In a phone call with KSAT today, the sheriff called the father of four an excellent corrections officer. He said he did not know if Walters had had the flu shot. I'm just, uh, you know, very proud of the staff we have, and it, and it affects us all when one of our family members is having to And, uh, you know, I would just also encourage everybody to get the flu shot. Here in Bear County, we have had one child die so far from the flu this season, and flu-related activity is up over this time last year in the county and across the state. We'll have more on that coming up at 6 o'clock. Well, today, Bear County Sheriff Javier Salazar confirmed he has ordered a full audit of current employees to make sure all background checks are accurate. This after a civilian employee was arrested for a shooting that happened on Saturday. Sheriff Salazar said Andrew Ramos was hired under a previous administration and according to current standards, he never would have been hired in the first place. Courtney Friedman sat down with the sheriff today to go over those hiring standards to see what has changed. 24-year-old Andrew Ramos was arrested over the weekend charged with aggravated assault with a deadly weapon for allegedly shooting a relative outside a Northside strip mall on Saturday. Sunday, he was identified as a civilian employee with the Bear County Sheriff's Office. While reviewing his file, investigators found he was arrested for robbery in 2014. Court records show in 2015 the case was dismissed for insufficient evidence. Absolutely. Sheriff Javier Salazar said the previous administration hired him in 2016. Uh, sick and tired of getting embarrassed uh, by people that should have never been allowed to set foot in this building. Uh, and yesterday's arrest was a perfect example. He said under current stricter hiring standards, Ramos would have never been hired. 
In October of 2018, I made our, our requirements a lot more stringent. That paper he handed over is this one, showing one main change. Previously, the background check only covered convictions. Now it covers all arrests, both misdemeanors and felonies. You may be a perfectly great person uh, that had one minor indiscretion and you were arrested and ultimately that case was dismissed. Um, I just can't continue to take that chance, uh, you know, for obvious reasons. Out of 2,900 applicants this year, we've only hired 114. The the stricter guidelines a response to continuous arrests within the department. This year alone, 18 BCSO deputies have been arrested for incidents that happened during their employment. Two civilian employees were also arrested. The numbers are down from last year when 26 deputies and three civilian employees were arrested. I won't be doing a touchdown dance anytime soon. I want that number down to zero. Currently, all deputies get new background checks every year, but in the past, that did not apply to civilian employees. Salazar's now changing that, making the annual check apply to everyone. Courtney Friedman, KSAT 12 News. And it was just a beautiful day outside. Taking a look at live cam, gorgeous shot of downtown San Antonio with those blue skies in the background. It was beautiful. If you could stand the higher mountain cedar count, we're in the middle of mountain cedar season and that pollen count is not looking pretty, but at least the temperatures are. Let's take a look at the weather watcher temperatures uh, and you can see that was 62 degrees in Warren's backyard in Del Rio, 66 for the high in Floresville in Michael's backyard. Zooming in a little bit further, some of our weather watchers probably still enjoying a little bit of a Christmas and holiday vacation, but we do have uh, Gary saying in West Kerrville it was 59 degrees. Now, starting tomorrow, we are going to have a weather change. Clouds first and then rain by New Year's Day. I've got a look at that forecast coming up in a few. Isis. Thank you, Sarah. New developments this afternoon in the latest anti-Semitic attack in New York. Federal prosecutors have filed hate crime charges against the suspect accused of slashing and stabbing five people who were celebrating Hanukkah inside a rabbi's home. As ABC's Trevor Alt explains, it's part of a frightening rise in attacks appearing to target Jewish people in the New York City area. The man accused of stabbing five people during a Hanukkah celebration Saturday is now facing federal hate crime charges. Prosecutors filing those charges Monday against Grafton Thomas two days after they say he entered a rabbi's home with a machete and started swinging wildly. The swinging is a sword, knife, I don't know what it was, back and forth, hitting people. Police say after the attack, a witness spotted Thomas's license plate, allowing officers to track his car into Harlem. He was taken into custody, reportedly covered in blood. Thomas's family and attorney say he has an extensive history of mental illness, but no known history of anti-Semitism. My impression from speaking with him is that uh, he needs serious psychiatric evaluation, whether those manifested in anti-Semitism at a moment, I can't tell you. This afternoon, the criminal complaint detailing information uncovered by investigators that Thomas had handwritten journals referring to Nazi culture with drawings of swastikas and the Star of David and his Internet history included searches for German Jewish temples near me and why did Hitler hate the Jews? He also showed an interest in the black Hebrew Israelite movement, an ideology followed by the suspected killers in a shootout earlier this month in Jersey City, which killed six, including the two assailants. Both attacks part of 13 in the past month targeting people of the Jewish faith in the New York City area. Let's call it what it is. These people are domestic terrorists. We have increased security in this state. Uh, I think it's time to step up the law enforcement. One of those 13 attacks happened here in Manhattan. A 65-year-old Jewish man attacked by a man who reportedly shouted an anti-Semitic remark. That suspect is also now facing a hate crime charge. Trevor All, ABC News, New York. As the final hours of 2019 wind down, Democrats running for president attempt to end the year on a high note with more money and support for the new year. Nadia Romero is in Washington tonight to explain. Well, Tim, we're talking endorsements and dollars, and Joe Biden could be leading the pack. He definitely has the most endorsements, 32 from sitting members of Congress and governors. But everyone is scrambling to get as many dollars as they can on the campaign trail, and that's why we're seeing more attacks against him. Democrats running for president sprint towards 2020. We are so excited about this campaign. Uh, we would love if you could sign one of those commit to vote cards. Top tier candidates in Iowa and New Hampshire attempt to get in front of as many early voters as possible. You decide who you let through the gate, 
based on who you think can win, who you think can represent the values that uh, the whole party uh, stands for. It'll be you, Joe. Well, thank you. It's not just FaceTime, but also fundraising. As the clock counts down to the end of the campaign quarter, candidates ask for cash. Go to ElizabethWarren.com and pitch in five bucks. While people look ahead to the new year, Joe Biden is facing backlash for an old decision. He supported the worst foreign policy decision made by the United States in my lifetime, which was the decision to invade Iraq. In 2002, then-Senator Biden voted for the Iraq War Resolution, which ultimately led to the second Gulf War. Years in Washington is not always the same thing as judgment. Biden called his vote, quote, bad judgment, and defends the rest of his record. My whole career has been devoted primarily to foreign policy. As candidates spend the final hours of the year stomping on the trail, they have their sights set on what could happen in 2020. I believe that 2020 is our moment in history. So there's good news for Bernie Sanders. His camp just released his medical summary, and it shows that he's in good health. And that's important because he had that heart attack, remember, a few weeks back. And as we're just about 40 days into the Iowa caucus, all of the candidates will be on a rigorous path until then. Live from Washington, I'm Nadia Romero. Tim, back to you. Thank you very much. Well, now to an update on a story we first told you about earlier this month. It was about an auction company that discovered a purple heart and wanted to return it to the family of the person it belonged to. And today, that finally happened. Derek Scholl found the purple heart belonging to Charles Cook about 10 years ago and never found the owner. Well, with the help of the Order of the Purple Heart, Scholl returned the medal to Cook's son, Forrest, in a ceremony at the Purple Heart Memorial outside the Kadena Reeves Justice Center. I have a lot of memorabilia of my father, his flag and other medals, but I didn't have this original Purple Heart. So to get it back in the family is just tremendous. Mr. Cook says his father died five days before he was born in 1944. He says he looks forward to sharing the medal and the story with his grandsons. Beautiful. Well, still ahead at five, it's a new loan option for aspiring Hispanic entrepreneurs, and it's helping people right here in San Antonio. Marilyn Moritz speaks with one businesswoman who says it helped her turn her passion for fitness into a promising future. This SA Salute Holiday greeting is brought to you by Broadway Bank. Hi, I'm Master Sergeant Aaron Clark from San Antonio, Texas, deployed to Camp Taji, Iraq. I want to say hi to my husband, Mike, and my son, Wesley, and all my coworkers at Lackland Air Force Base. Merry Christmas. Taking a look at consumer headlines, a new study from the Federal Reserve says tariffs placed on imports this year may have backfired. The study claims tariffs on steel, aluminum, motor vehicles, computers and leather goods led to job losses and higher prices. It also says in September U.S. consumers and businesses paid more than $7 billion in tariffs. Right now the U.S. and China are working on a deal that could ease prices on Chinese goods and American farm exports. From restaurants to lawn care to high tech, opening your own business doesn't just take hard work and passion, it also takes money. That's where the nonprofit Lift Fund comes in. With a huge investment from Bank of America, it now has a pot of money to loan to aspiring Hispanic entrepreneurs. 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz introduces us to one businesswoman who turned her dream into dollars. You got three minutes to go, you almost done. Marcella Freeman not only has a newborn at home, she's nurturing another baby, her business. Good, Bernie. Nice. This is nice Burn It work. in 30. Come on, you're almost done. You got 30 seconds, that's it. Where Marcella and her team motivate women to get healthier through nutrition. Where's your heart rate? And a lot of burpees. To me, it's not just about making money. I really care about making an impact. Four years ago, she quit her marketing job to embrace her side hustle, fitness training, the aha moment when a client began crying. She told me, I hate what I see. I'm disgusted with myself. And that really broke my heart. And I knew that I had something that could help her and all the other women that feel like that. Marcella had the know-how. What she didn't have was capital. Part of our underwriting 
is the fact that you've got to let us know how are you going to pay that loan back. That's where Lift Fund comes in. The nonprofit loans money to businesses that can't get loans from banks. And there's good news for Hispanic entrepreneurs. Lift Fund is launching the San Antonio Latino Dream Makers Fund, and Bank of America is putting $100,000 into that fund. That 100,000 is going to help, you know, four to five mm -hmm. small businesses. As that principal payment comes back into the fund, then we'll have enough money to lend out to a, a sixth borrower and a seventh and eighth. Funding more entrepreneurs like Marcella in perpetuity. With her loan, Marcella was able to secure this space and begin changing lives. Six months into it, I was no longer diabetic. I was down about 30 pounds. It's been a true game changer for me. <laughs> It's been a game changer for Marcella, too. You're almost done, ladies. And if you know you're so passionate about something that it's going to be your everything, mm -hmm. then do it. Marilyn Moritz, <laughs> KSAP 12 News. And we have more information about the Dream Makers Fund on KSAT.com. Turning to weather now, a beautiful day out there after a chilly start. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness, yeah. it was so cold. This morning yeah. I was up in the Fair Oaks Ranch area uh -huh. right at sunrise. It was below freezing up yeah. there, oh, wow. at least briefly, but it was cold and then it ended up being just a pleasant day Very outside. Nice. Yeah. Very nice. One of those days where you don't need the air conditioning, you can just open up the windows. And tomorrow's going to be one of those days as well, just a touch cooler, and we are going to start to see increasing clouds, but let's crunch the numbers from today. Uh, here's a look at the time lapse. Beautiful blue skies. 64 was the high. The average high is about 62, but there's that morning low of 34. Those official temperatures, by the way, are taken at the airport. And so that's why you can see that the morning low in San Antonio was a little bit warmer because the airport is south of Fair Oaks Ranch. Uh, now, we didn't see any rainfall today, but that may change over the next couple of days. New Year's Day, in fact, we have a chance for some scattered light rain. But tonight, it'll just get cold quickly under clear skies with a light and variable wind. Temperatures are going to cool down pretty quickly. Uh, 42 uh, by about midnight, it's going to be chilly all evening for us. Here's our weather setup across uh, San Antonio and South Texas. You can see that we're dealing with clear skies, but look down toward Cor Corpus Christi and near Laredo. You can see the clouds slowly moving in. Those clouds will make it here by tomorrow, right around the midday hours. Meanwhile, we're kind of sandwiched between two systems. We've got a big, massive system across parts of uh, the Great Lakes, bringing a lot of snowfall. Uh, and this is the reason why we've enjoyed the cooler mornings here in San Antonio, because we've got that dry air filtering around it. That's what's allowed for clear skies in the morning hours, which cools us down. The next system that we'll talk about is just off of the coast of Los Angeles and Baja, California. This low is what's going to increase our clouds and bring us a chance for scattered light rain on New Year's Day. Let's take a look at the future cast. Even as it approaches tomorrow, notice that the clouds are really going to increase. By the afternoon, it should be overcast for most of us. Uh, and by midnight, it'll stay cloudy. So as we ring in the new year, you can expect cloudy and cool conditions. And then we'll see scattered light rain on New Year's Day. Notice that the rain is a little bit more widespread and heavier south of San Antonio. We have a better chance for rain south of San Antonio, which this time of year is a little bit on the rarer side. So if you live closer to the coastal plain, just know that by Wednesday you have a better chance for rain than us in San Antonio when we will see areas of scattered light rain. Now this is not going to be a goalie washer by any means, okay? We're really only going to see maybe about a tenth to maximum a quarter of an inch of rain on Wednesday, and most of the heavy rain will be south of San Antonio. So no rain tomorrow though for us, but we will start off sunny and kind of go back and forth along the sunshine seesaw with increasing clouds by noon we will be in the upper 50s. And then once that cloud deck settles over, temperatures will stay in the upper 50s for the high temperature tomorrow with winds shifting from the south uh, from the north part of me to the southeast at five to 10 miles per hour. Then we'll have a cool evening as we ring in New Year's Eve. We'll still likely be able to see fireworks because the cloud deck will be above fireworks, so you don't need to worry about that. Uh, we'll have light winds uh, by tomorrow evening and right around midnight it should be at 50 degrees. So if you are going to be outside, bring that coat with you, even though winds will be light. For me, 
South Texan temperatures in the 50s are pretty chilly, so keep that in mind. Now on the Wednesday, like I said, we will have areas of scattered light rain. Then we'll clear out on Thursday, uh, and by the we the weekend it should be pretty nice. Temperatures will be in near 70 degrees uh, both Saturday and Sunday under total sunshine. But again, Wednesday is going to be chilly, okay. and it, with areas of light rain. All right, thank you, Sarah. Mm -hmm. Larry, just back from Dallas, where he yep. spent much of the day waiting for word on Garrett. And here is what the Cowboys just told us moments ago, that the Cowboys will have no press conference today. As of now, nothing scheduled tomorrow. And despite reports, no firings. Plus, from worst to first when it comes to the Spurs, tough schedule this week. Coming up. I don't know if I've ever been disappointed after a win. Dollars a year. Well, I, it, it's hard for me. Dallas quarterback Dak Prescott says what everyone is thinking Wilson. following their win against the Redskins and the Cowboys only have themselves to blame in big board sports. Pro football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. Now that the Dallas Cowboys 2019 season is officially over with, day one of Jason Garrett watch is on. The embattled head coach of the Cowboys meeting with team owner Jerry Jones and his son Stephen late this afternoon to determine his future with the team. Garrett coaching in the final year of his contract, finishing what should have been a much better than an 8-8 regular season that included a 24-22 loss to the then winless Jets in week six. That's where many believe the coaching change should have taken in place, but Garrett is adamant he wants to stay. Yeah, I want to be the coach of the Dallas Cowboys, but we'll see what happens. Do you think you will be the coach of the Cowboys? I have no idea. I love Coach Garrett. Um, you know, uh, I had him since I got here. I uh, spent four years with the man. Uh, it's tough. Respect and love everything that he stands for. Um, the coach he is, the man he is, somebody I look up to. Uh, I'm thankful for his impact. Now the Houston Texans are back in the playoffs for the second straight season, and they will host Buffalo in the first round of the AFC playoffs this Saturday in Houston. That's after they lost to Tennessee Sunday 35-14 when Bill O'Brien rested his star players, including Deshaun Watson, after Kansas City had already determined the playoff seating by beating the Chargers. But the big question now is, what is the latest on the return of J.J. Watt? Just continuing to build, you know, just continuing to build on what he did last week, you know, rep wise um, and, you know, some of the things that you would have to do relative to what his injury was, you know, just continuing to, to evaluate that with him, you know, in conjunction with him, see how he's feeling. Kickoff on Saturday in NRG Stadium is set for 3.35 p.m. And the Spurs are back on the practice court today to get ready for a week of Warriors, Thunder, and Milwaukee. The first two games at home Tuesday and Thursday before traveling to Milwaukee to face the Bucks Saturday night. Going literally from worst to first in the NBA after the Spurs destro destroyed Detroit on Saturday night, 136-109. Up first, it's the Warriors who are steadily improving. They actually haven't been struggling lately. They've won uh, four out of five. So, um, you know, it's just got to be focused and uh, take care of business. They've been playing very confident, uh, shooting the ball well, playing active on defense. So, you know, it's going to be you know, one of those games. All right, so one of those games. It's tomorrow, 6 p.m. The Warriors are 9-25. and 25, The Spurs, 13-18. and 18. Sure would be nice to see them beat them anytime. Absolutely. Thanks, Larry. You got it. We'll be right back. And for the forecast, we are going to be seeing scattered light rain on New Year's Day, but we're looking at temperatures much cooler over the next couple of days as well. For the new year tomorrow, just some clouds and at midnight. All right, thank you, Sarah, and thanks for watching the news at 5. World News is next. We'll see you back at 6.